What's up guys, this is RG giving another high definition broadcast. As you can see, we're here on Unison League and we are going to be doing another cool Unison League video tutorial and guide on the super duper 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 hard Santa's in town Arcadia. Now this is one of the hardest quests I've actually ever done before and um yeah, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and get into it real quick and tell you exactly how to do the quest. First thing I want you guys to notice about uh, this is um, I'm going to be doing a, a lot of playing and uh, pausing just because this is a really hard quest and I want you to get every single part of the quest so that you guys can know how to beat it without dying. Alright, so the first thing you need to know is you have to position yourself in this uh, quest. Now it would be very awesome if uh, the devs were able to actually develop something where you could switch in um, you know characters in different positions because you need to have specific positions for this quest to be completed at least I think uh, correctly or without any death so what we did here was we had a paladin which is me high defense high magic defense decently good attack and we have attack have attack procs which is all physical testament um, and this is just my build uh, so you have to have a decently geared paladin on top here and then a decently geared or well geared healer over here on the second spot how you would achieve this is going into your friends quest and then this character here Yuki is which is in the middle was the creator you cannot be the creator if you're the healer or the paladin because you cannot switch those players into the top spots if you're the player that is the actual creator of the friends quest you will always be placed in the center okay so that's why you have to have one of your DPS's actually make the quest and then have the paladin in the first slot, the healer in the second slot, and then the third and fourth slots can be the other DPS, right? And then you're the creator, so you'll be in the middle there. That being said, for the paladin to succeed in this role, I would suggest getting this skill right here, Devoted Strike. Now, um, who put me onto this is one of my really good friends, uh, Rio. He's like a really underrated paladin and sometimes he's a tank bot, which is somebody that he just all he wants to do is tank all day long, but actually he came in handy for once in a lifetime uh, and He actually put me onto this skill. It's called uh, right here devoted strike uh, And it's very very good. It's an aoe skill that uh, is a taunt It's pretty much an aoe taunt and it's very very good for taunting um, the enemy pl enemy uh, AI because it's a multi-target attack and multi-target attacks are very high on the aggro scale plus it's an aggroing skill so it's like player uh, the enemies are more likely to target you if you're using this attack okay so it's like a double up on aggro it's like amazing for aggro okay even though you're doing one damage to them still gonna do a really good damage plus I have a proc on it uh, so the AP is gonna g goes higher so it's just even just that much better because I have physical damage uh, ups or uh, physical de physical testaments okay that being said let's go ahead and get into the video actually uh, that was the setup okay that's just the setup this is how serious this question is that was just the setup all right so here we go we have devoted strike first thing I do is devoted strike now I attack the first target that we're gonna attack is top down so devoted strike first, then it goes top down. Asami's only healing me and Asami. The reason being, these guys down here are not going to be attacked. Why is that? Because I devoted strike everything, and I'm keeping aggro on the first target using the dual uh, the dual sword. I think it's called dual sword. Yeah, dual sword and um, divine smash. So that's why I'm keeping uh, damage on the single target. I'm thinking, okay, I have a unison now. Do I unison now? No, I decided not to. I probably could have unison at that time. But I wanted to save my unison for the second round as I know the second round's coming up and I want to have a good amount of debuffs and buffs for that second round. I probably could have unison at that point, but I decided, hey, you know what? I think we're going to be okay. We've already taken out the first one. We're going to take out the second one. And if I don't have unison by the second round, we're going to be in trouble. So I decided to stay off um, using unison. We do have... Uh, our first buff coming out so um, we have the first buff coming out now we have a KFC which is a Kagatsushi and two fines now these fines are very very uh, pivotal in getting our 
cost up as well as being able to take off debuffs and status ailments okay so that's why those are very good also they heal so it kind of gives takes pressure off of your healer there okay we do only have a uh, two buff at the mo or four buff at the moment so um, it's not the best uh, situation but right here this is why I save my unison because right at this point I'm like you know what first thing I'm gonna do devoted strike then I'll pop my unison boom I'll have a good amount of buffs on my team with the pumpkin witch and I'll also have a debuffs on the enemy if I would have debuffed those enemies in be uh, the beginning they wouldn't have you know it wouldn't have mattered too much but these guys right here our damage is gonna skyrocket now because we do have a four buff plus the two that's a six buff and their debuffs by four so this is gonna be huge um, I'm making sure that everybody is on me and I don't want to overuse devoted strike if I overuse the devoted strike um, it's just doing like almost no damage but they're just gonna target me so if they're already on me on targeting me I want to do high damage uh, DPS single target right I want to use either my dual strike uh, or dual sword rather uh, or my um, fate my divine smash so those are the two skills you want to kind of keep spamming and every time my uh, cheer is up I want to spam it right now I'm, I'm spamming the cheer you know I see it coming up um, I'm sure I probably missed a couple cheers here and there but you know you're just trying to do your best getting those cheers up as fast as you possibly can uh, and keeping those the aggro on you now the reason that you want to have your paladin up there in the top right spot is because when somebody attacks you with a three target attack or an AOE three target attack it's only gonna attack me and Asami the damage is not gonna go in on anyone else you know it's not gonna go down on ghost there or anything like that it's just gonna go on us too so it's keeping the damage in in a uh, in a good area now look I'm saying balance right away okay guys I'm saying hey they already use their buff make sure you balance so we got um, the debuff going out and then we got um, the haste going up so ghost says I'll balance first it's always very important to know who's gonna be balancing and there you go um, I have all the aggro on me as you can see I'm doing good damage and look he's got a uh, greater healing out he's gonna um, do a area recovery so those guys get their uh, debuffs off or their status ailments off now I'm just making sure that all the aggro's on me so I'm like okay should I devote a strike here or maybe I should just do a single target I'm trying to think hey, is this is this wind spirit still attacking me or not if she's not attacking me if she's not uh, targeted on me I'm like okay you know what I should just do deal dual sword because it's gonna do a lot more damage she's gonna go down and she got double debuff so my my damage is pretty high right now uh, as the dual sword and the divine um, the divine smash is scaling off of attack and defense okay so I'm doing a good amount of damage I'm always looking at my cost to make sure that I have enough um, cost to do that do divided strike instantly right boom there it is and then boom right again away right away I'm using the debuff you have to make sure that these guys are debuffed because if you don't make sure that they're debuffed they're pretty much gonna insta give you even though you have a really really high amount of defense um, they could crit you or hit you with a couple of magic attacks and you're just gonna go down look how much damage they're doing to me even though they're already debuffed and I'm buffed all the way up to six buff so right now I'm just counting out my cost I'm like okay I could probably dual sword right now just keeping enough cost uh, to be able to do a good amount of damage and still have enough uh, for doing a devoted strike in the be very beginning of the round um, well I guess in the the next round it's gonna be the boss round he's a solo boss so you don't really need to do a devoted strike at all it's usually for the beginning four rounds okay so if I'm just looking to see now, hey, are these guys still on me? I'm just going to doing my uh, dual swords. I see that I have my unison. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to touch the unison right now because I am designated to do more of a debuffing. Like, so I debuff every single time it's up. And even though I'm a, an actual soldier or um, a general, I chose to go into having a dark monster, which is pretty much not great for a soldier because it's magic damage but just because it's so good for the run I'm getting targeted over and over and over again and the pumpkin witch she's giving D 
debuffs to the enemy and buffs to my team. Probably one of the best uh, monsters in the game because she's so versatile in the fact that she can do all that um, debuffing and then she can buff your team. So it's just so good um, that she's able to do that. So that's why, um, you know, when a paladin is being targeted all the time, very good to have an incredibly useful unison to be using. If I was using like an Abseris all the time, it's pretty much, we probably wouldn't be able to do this run. Now here, look at this guys, very very pro move by Asami. He knows that he's going to be bombarded with damage right now, so he uses an Ama, which a lot of people on this run say, hey, Ama's uh, buff is way too short, but if you're using Ama without um, a matching, like say if you're using her just solo or just like how we did uh, with a rainbow unison uh, that it doesn't match, the actual damage output uh, that you, you can get out of this reflect is huge plus the damage mitigation is huge, okay? so that's why I thought Asami did a really really good job at that point I was really uh, surprised he actually did that so I was really good um, so I'm doing dual swords making sure that he's targeting me now at this point look at the finds the finds right here we're actually debuffed right now uh, so once we hit the find boom the find hits us right here hits us again and then look at this uh, I don't have my debuffs on me anymore and we got haste as well as healed alright so haste healed debuff um, taken off and it's removed status also very very good for PvE alright so here it goes again Look at his debuffs just ran off, and look, I'm putting the debuffs right back on him. But as you can see, he's actually has a crit on him, so he should be getting balance. So there it is, balance going off on Ghost right there. And look, Asami now uses his dignity right before he uses his um his uh, his unison. This actually is very very good move right here because if you use your dignity after you use your unison, then it's going to be already on cooldown. Um, you know once you use your unison but if you use your dignity first and then you use your unison it's already ticking down taking off uh, the dignity okay so he's gonna have his dignity sooner or later uh, you know faster than you he would have if he wouldn't have done that now we're gonna go ahead and put up another debuff just stacking the debuffs stacking 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 the debuffs and you can see how useful this uh, pumpkin witch is on this run because he's just stacking debuffs over and over and over again buffing our team over and over and over again and I'm taking most of the damage so that's why I'm able to get all of that uh, in there all of those debuffs all those buffs and mitigating the damage really really good to have a paladin on this run especially somebody that has somebody like a Lilith or you know a Valkyrie even so you can keep buffing your team at this point in the match we are saying you know what this is over we got this so that's why we have kinda knew at that point that it was over that's why you can see Asami before was putting up the hearts and everything no deaths perfectly clean run and if you guys follow this uh, video and if you do it the same way I'm sure you guys can re re uh, redo it the same way you can um, you know reproduce this result uh, I'm sure you guys can probably even do better than me and I, I'm sure you guys might have some kind of strategies that I don't know about so uh, this is just the way I did it um, I hope you guys learned a little bit about how to start it out how the match goes and how you actually uh, complete this without dying as well as um, completing it uh, pretty smoothly and uh, using just well-timed unisons as well as positioning characters um, so yeah, uh, if you guys like the video, definitely give me a like. I would appreciate all the like, comments, and subscribes you guys can give me. Really, uh, you know, boosts my videos up and uh, can bring it to the forefront when people search Unison League. Um, as well as definitely tell the developers to put in a system where you can switch your characters in PVE. Uh, this would be very helpful, especially for something like this hard. Okay, so great i think that's about it for this one guys as always thank you guys for watching i hope you guys have a happy holiday and take it easy peace